mental health from the virus, it feels uh, almost like too intertwined, right? Um, President Biden just, just said that like, you know, a broken spirit is the same as a broken arm. Uh, understanding that we are going to have these experiences and that it's no longer optional to, to, to not address your mental health. It's no longer optional to... And in, like the kids that I work with, understanding that like we are really trying to address some very very deep issues and before there were many kids and i think that it's it's still a struggle sometimes for kids to be able to voice what's going on for them to be able to voice and say i think this is depression i think this is anxiety right i'm having this feeling when I go to class and I, I get shortness of breath and I start breathing really, really fast because I don't know what's going on and my heart is racing. And I think that's a panic attack. And they start to like be able to have words and that they can put towards the, the things that are happening to them. And I think that's something that's really, really powerful and a big shift in what I've seen because before they may just ignore them, before they may just say, okay, I have this panic attack, well, then I'm going to go and not go to class, right? I'm just not going to go to class because like having a mental health crisis is something for quote unquote crazy people. And that's not who I am. So I'm just not going to address this issue. I think they're able to understand what's going on, name those things that are going on, naming it for themselves and for others, and then acting upon it, right? Being able to say, okay, this is something that I'm feeling I understand it as these symptoms and I need some help. I need to be able to act upon this. I need to talk to my therapist, talk to my parents, talk to my counselor and say, I'm feeling these things and I really would like some help with them. Um, the idea of asking for help, especially in men and just kind of like the way that masculinity permeates through our society. It's, it's the idea that like, we're not allowed to, we're not allowed to um, come and say, you know, this is something, especially if it's not physical, uh, because physical things are okay, right? Phys a broken arm, you can, I had a fight, I got a broken arm, right? It's kind of masculine in that way. But the idea that like, I had a emotional fight or a verbal fight with my partner and that hurt my feelings. And then now I'm feeling, you know, not as engaged in schoolwork as I used to be because we broke up. That's not something that they would normally see as like, or what would typically see as, as an issue that they need to address, right? They may find coping mechanisms. They may say, well, then I'm just gonna go to the weight room. I'm just gonna go play football a little bit more or, you know, go play video games and trying like numbing techniques or things that aren't really healthy for them. Or kind of thinking about ways in which you can be authentic and vulnerable with the kids you work with. Um, if any kid either ask me or if it comes up in conversation, I will tell them that I'm in therapy. I will mention, oh, my therapist says this, that, and the third, kind of giving them advice um, and letting them know because you won't believe the amount of times that I have casually mentioned my therapist in a conversation, in a classroom, in a group of kids. And then let's say hour, two hours later, later on in the day, someone comes up and just kind of to the side of me and says, I didn't know you had a therapist. And I'm like, yeah, like what? Everyone should have a therapist. Of course, I have things that are going on. I have issues that I need to deal with. I have some happy things that I want to kind of like recognize how do I reap joy and feel the full feelings, right? Like,